Steve Martin, Vince Aguera, Vince Aguera Custom Shop. I got something unique. Well, this is not unique. I guess it's unique. It's not a Gibson. Ha! Broken headstock syndrome. Anyway, that is a nasty, nasty precious. Anyway, those are nails. Yep, you heard it here first, folks. Nails. So this is why... <laughs> When you don't, when you break your headstock off, don't bring it to Uncle Frank and ask Uncle Frank, since he has woodworking tools in the garage, to fix it. Bring it to a luthier. Luthiers can fix this stuff. You see the, the gap there? If it was just the nails and Uncle Frank got the gap closed up really good, we could get the ugly nails out route some splines in there, put some hardwood splines in and refinish it, touch it up. You'll still see them, but you won't see them like that. Um, or we could finish it a, a burst color around that and actually close it up. But you can see when I push on the headstock, you see that? So what I'm going to try to do, actually, the, the thing is with this guitar, it's got a lot more damage too. So let me flip it around again and try to see if I can break it a little more. I guess I'm zoomed in, huh? Let me zoom out, so sorry. I'm new at this camera thing, right? So we got a couple of significant splits in the finish, but there's no significant bellying. It's pretty dang flat. So obviously it, it got really dry. Maybe somebody had it in a um, a furnace heated place, somebody that really liked it warm, 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 or oscillating conditions. You know, we're in Florida, humidity stays like 90%. Um, in most houses, people with air conditioning were 50%-ish. Um, if you like it nice and cool and conditioned like I do. Um... Anyway, up north, they got problems like this all the time because of the gas, gas heat, dry heat. We typically don't have that problem, but we have a lot of people that don't even use air conditioning down here, man. They still open the windows and just suck up the humidity. Oh, I guess I haven't showed this side yet. So, pretty significant break. Oh, nice 80 grit sandpaper, Frank. <laughs> I don't know if it was Frank. I'm just picking on the name Frank. So if your name's Frank, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm not hating. I'm just making stories up, you know, as we go. But anyway, um, I'm going to probably just run a blade up under here, cut into the break as much as I can. Oh, the other thing I wanted to point out, even though those are the bad things, the good thing is, man, the neck, yeah, excuse my messy workbench, man. I have, I have really plowed through a rack of guitars. Um, a couple of them are gone and a mandolin. Um, yeah, so that's minus two acoustics and a mandolin that I've actually done this between Thursday night and the weekend, which is pretty cool. But anyway, the neck plane, it's hard to see, but it's, it's a good flat neck, not flat radius, flat as far as relief. I haven't touched the truss rod, so apparently it's doing something. And the fingerboard is right, when you look down at it, it's right at the top of the rosewood. Not much clearance, but anyway, it's better than most that come in the building. That's a 12 string, so there's gonna be a lot of torque. Uh, there is one other split that looks to be repaired in the fingerboard which is concerning, but this looks like it's a older and the tag is gone. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm sorry. You can see the glue line where the tag used to be, but there is a serial number up in there. So I'm gonna run that. I'm pretty sure, I know it's American made because it says made in America, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it does not so they don't put any markings up here. But I am reasonably certain, because I had a, an older ovation that 
looked a lot like this. Big old, I had to get rid of it because, man, fat brothers cannot. <laughs> well, again, if you fat and you play an ovation, I'm sorry if I offended you, man. I'm trying to be politically correct. This fat boy, just like an upright bass, man, I just can't. I lose every time. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is, um, since there's no pressure, and probably to train my brother, Charlie, if you're listening, get ready. Uh, we got that and actually an Epiphone 335 left-handed, which is pretty cool because it's in Heritage Cherry, and it's older, not, not like one of the brand new ones. Um, so... It actually looked like a nice quality piece. As a matter of fact, I know it's older. The guy that brought it here said it's been broken for 15 years. Headstock, detached completely. Um, so, and all the parts are rusted out and stuff. So he asked me if I wanted it because, you know, I gave him the repair price and we both know that an Epiphone is not, not really gonna stomach that. If it was a crack, like it was broken and not detached, we can leave the glue line, you know, and get away with that for a, a more modest price, but a full spline refinish, no, it's not worth it. So he um, he gave it to me. Matter of fact, this is a broken headstock deal. Let's, let's do it. So um, really cool dude. Sorry, guys. So you can even tell by the case, I don't think, I don't know if Epiphone's doing them like that anymore because it's a lot like a Gibson. And I know I haven't run the numbers or anything on it, but she's a lefty. And I think she has naturally aged binding, I think. And I don't even know what I did with the headstock. I got it in the drawer. Not that drawer. Oh, that's funny to see an empty drawer around here. Crazy. Uh, who do we got? Who do we got? Banjo? Come on, man. Buckskin, there she is. So Buckskin Cherry is getting done. So, so somebody tried to fix this as well. And it was a fail. Um, it looks like they tried to fix it because there's sanding on the back. I don't know, I'm just like rambling, dude. I'm, this COVID thing got me, I don't know why I can't say I'm bored because I've been working like a fool. Yeah, see, it was a whole nother break. Yep, 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 I, I forgot I had already looked at that. So there was a whole nother break that they repaired and it actually took and either they're the unluckiest people on the planet and dropped it again. There is part of the glue, the original glue right there. So this is part of the original break that didn't get sealed well. Other than that, it's the mahogany that, a new break. <laughs> Isn't that some business? But, I mean, if you don't have a stand and the thing's just leaning up against something, man, if it falls, you're done. Any mahogany instrument that's got that kind of grain run out. Um, wow. With my mahogany, I always, I don't think I've ever done a mahogany neck that didn't have some kind of laminate. Well, we got some mahogany in here. That's not mahogany for sure. Oh, that's mahogany. So I don't think... That purple heart is gonna let the same thing happen here. Although, I don't know. I've never had one of my next break. So I don't know. Should we try to break it? <laughs> not, <laughs> it's not happening. <laughs> not on my watch, man. I don't even relic crap because I just can't stomach it. I'm sorry. It's pretty, huh? That's got the ultra lamb phenolic impregnated board that needs to be polished up and fretted. Obviously, it's not done yet. And uh, mahogany on mahogany, head plate. 
And this is a full, oh man. Okay, let's walk. Let's walk, shall we? I need to give y'all a tour of my shop. It's so messy. Uh, what is this? Yeah, this is the body right here. So this is one of the decons. Man, I hope this thing, this camera doesn't keep flipping and I'm not paying attention. All right, so this is carved top, solid mahogany, and uh, it's a one piece too, man. Look at that. It's got really cool grain too. Um, I don't want to lay it down because it's, man, nice. It's got that, that flame, not flame, but the grain runs out looking like a, a flame on a lighter or something. Uh, it's got the multi-stepped um, thing because of the carve. This is a really cool, cool model, man. Cool carve. This was the one that was inspired by my buddy Greg Kerbo. Um, pickup placement was Kerbo inspired as well. Not inspired, it's exact. Exactly. Ex exact, exactly. But, but yeah, that's her, man. <clears throat> but, all right. Wow, y'all want to let me let me just brag on something real fast. Not me, but I'm gonna brag on my new uh, Iwata LPH. Hang, hang on, I don't want to break this LPH spray gun. This is LPH 400. I have not sanded this or buffed it yet. So color sanding and buffing is next. That's dude. That's right off the gun. Right out of the paint booth. Uh, yeah, there's a little build-up by the pickups you see right there. Because I'm heavy-handed, boy. I'm, I'm used to shooting lacquer. I'll stack her up and then sand her off. I got a couple of dust bunnies right there. No problem. They'll sand out in the first five seconds with 1,000 or 1,200. So, anyway, dude, I'm, I'm so excited. I say dude, like, I don't know who I'm talking to. But, um, yeah, I got junk laying every mirror, man. Y'all don't judge me. Um, this is prior to, this is in the middle of sanding and buffing. That's a cool looking guitar though, huh? That goes with these necks here. Might as well show you. Man, we ain't got nothing to do. Y'all got anything to do? Y'all COVID, uh, COVID shut-ins? See, here's maple. I still do the, I mean, I just like the strength and the, um, the look of having that stringer. And I like the, the extra snap that it gives the tone. Um, so this one, I guess you can guess what that one is for. So it's got to be sanded and buffed. And I still don't know if I'm going knock to the, knock the sheen down. I usually do. Um, this is an interesting thing, man. This is a licensed by Fender neck that I'm going to be doing uh, some jazz and precision and keeping just keeping the headstock, keeping the license by Fender. It won't have a Fender name, obviously, because it's not a Fender. It'll have my name, but I'm going to be doing, instead of an import series, and I want to call it a kit series, but um, that's in essence what it's going to be, but I'll be controlling the, uh, the fret work and I hope that, oh, that's things sit around so long as dusty so this has not been color sanded or buffed or wet sanded except the head plate which is rosewood it needs to be cleaned I don't it's got a bunch of paw prints on it so anyway that is what we're working on well we got this guy this is in sealer for Blake Hall and we've Charlie has just um, sanded the sealer down on it and got it down to, um, to where it's just a couple of little shiny spots. And uh, I've got to seal one more time and then uh, take it down again, another mo again. And then on the back is alder. Nice stuff. We're gonna do a trans black on the back where you'll still see the green, uh, a little darker on the rims and um, clear with a, vintage amber flavor so it's picking up some of the ambers now with the sealer it kind of enhances that a little bit we're gonna enhance that a little bit more y'all look at his workbench when he left here from from that gray mat to that gray mat he basically keeps everything off of it and clear all up in there 
when I come over here, I just like slide everything aside and random tandem. That's why that mountain is because of me. <laughs> that mountain is, well, kind of the both of us, but like I'm building a bunch of uh, CNC sleds right there, the vacuum fixtures, um, which is a pretty cool project. Like I've done them this way and they're a pain in the butt to locate. So I finally got some locator pins on the, uh, on the deck of the CNC machine. And now, you know, I, I just walk up and locate it with those two holes in the table and um, it's in the same spot every time. So there's the a new head plate for the bases. And I think these are blanks, yeah. So I just do blanks and then um, it's already got the pre-located thing. So as long as I write the program around those pre-located holes, yeah, I'm located, it's good to go. And there's some bigger ones that are gonna get ruined if I don't move them, um, that are going to have, <laughs> these are kind of cool because they'll have the back plate, the battery cover, and the truss rod cover. That way I can have the grain running like with one piece of wood. If I get a piece of rosewood, piece of ebony, piece of wing maple matching, whatever, all the covers will match and the grain will all be the oriented the same way without me doing three different fixtures, right? Pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let me put this up. Let's see if there's anything else I need to show you here. Probably. I showed you that. That's that other body that's going to be a, uh, a Deacon Carve. Very cool. This is Ultra Lamb with the, in the rosewood color. So that's the two Ultra Lambs that I do. Um, there's a fretless behind it that's also Ultra Lamb Black with Purple Heart Binding. That's a six. Check this guy out. This is a really nice ebony board with the last piece of Kerbo Rockwood that I have. Um, Wingay head plate for Ryan Sampson. And he got his initials in it. He wanted no, no inlays except that one on the top. Really cool. It's a heavy piece, so I'm, uh, I'm taking my time carving on it by hand. I, it was CNC'd, but that's basically just a tool to remove wood, just like I would do with a pin router or anything else. And then it's all about feel. This is the VJ. Um, really digging that. This one is a uh, one piece maple. Ready to go, ready for fingerboard. There's another couple of them up there. Ready to go. We got a couple other. Uh, this one's actually a piece of rock wood as well that I got from Kerbo before, that's years ago, man. I've had this thing sitting, not this thing, the billet that I bought from him, um, or at least one of the few that I bought from him. Uh, this one has the um, Thuya Burl head plate. I guess I need to take you over there and show, the, show you the body. And it's a four string with a narrow spacing and really nice bird's eye maple. And I will take you over there and show you. Oh, first let me show you Ryan Sampson's body. Look at this thing, man. So he went with the Elite package, which is cool. Man, if I drop this, I'm going to hate myself because this is getting really right to ready. So wing center to match the head plate. Um, nice flamey quilt. And the Elite gets a top and a back. And he picked out all the maples. So book matched on the outsides. And the, um, the center one is just one that he picked. It's an alder core with walnut everywhere, like everywhere. And then on the center walnut under the wing gay, we've got black lambs on top and bottom. That way, dang it, I'm gonna drop it. When I... Um, carve all the the relief after I get the neck all sorted out and I carve that here let me set this somewhere else I'm gonna drop it and that's gonna just make me mad here's some how does this turn into a shop tour man so these are some uh, finishes I posted up on Facebook it's just one piece of swamp ash I started by shooting the whole thing with 
with black, right? So you can see the grain there. Shot the whole thing. Then I masked off this first one, sanded back everything until I just left the black in the lines. Oh, how long was that sideways? Jeez, sorry. Anyway, um, sanded it back and then took the really thin down trans white and shot the whole thing once, then taped this off. This is still taped off. And then I shot this a second coat. So I really, I'm digging both of these. Um, so it's kind of like that old Mary Kay white. You could cover that with some vintage amber and get that old uh, Telecaster yellowed white, that kind of Mary Kay blonde thing going on. Anyway, what else we got? Oh, and here's a piece of zebra that I'm working on a hand rub stain burst that utilizes these three colors. Man, that battery thing just keeps hanging out. So it utilizes those three stains and just blend it out and sand it back a little bit. I think I would definitely, I'd probably go back and shoot a little bit darker just on the edge. Maybe, I don't know, I don't know. Um, all right, last thing. All the paint stuff is a mess, so let's don't look at all that. But here's the Thuya burl. This has sealed and leveled out really nice. That's why it's down to a dull finish. Um, and I think, I think we have to go one more light sealer. Just one more really light little sealer because there's a couple little spots that didn't level out because that uh, swamp ash really loves... Um, yeah, loves that finish. But anyway, so that is, uh, that's what I just showed you. Here's another little four banger that, um, is going to be really cool. This is EMG TW loaded music man. And this is EMG loaded PJ, which is going to be very cool. Here's Blake Hall's neck. This is going to get a vintage Amber. Um, it's kind of been pre-enhanced. Little hand rub dye in there, little browns and yellows, and um, so that's all sealer. That's why that stuff is so thick; it does not go on pretty. So that needs another um, needs to be sanded back, and another coat of sealer. I am quite certain. Uh, last thing, let me show you the colors I'm messing around with. This is all that I've been just going crazy with colors, man. Um, we've got a strat in to do a tungsten. Tungsten Gray on, that uh, is an American Strat. I just bought this olive green because they mixed it up for a Jeep guy and it was the wrong color. And I'm like, dude, that is ugly, but yeah, bring it. <laughs> so um, a really cool baby turquoise that I haven't done anything with reminds me of old 57 Chevy-ish. Dragonfly teal, it's kind of dark, but it's a cool color. Um, this is the baby blue petty blue that i just showed you over there um that's just a white white then olympic white if you've ever wondered what the difference was here you go olympic white looks gray and sometimes blue and again these are popsicle sticks there's nothing smooth about them but it's got a grayish blue hue to it that's not really you can see the white is just white on the left and the other one oh we're sideways again guys i'm sorry maybe there's a lock on here that i can find but anyway i'm gonna close out anyway this is like a 25 minute video all right peace out may not even post it you know how that goes all right peace